Hey everyone, it's Winslow. It's uh, it's been a minute, and uh, I'm back. And this is my new template. I know it's just a blank, empty project. It looks like a ton of things, but uh, it's actually pretty useful. So, to start things off, this is Studio One Four and a Half. It's been my dog, I guess, of choice for the last few years. Used to use FL Studio. Moved to this. Try other ones. This is what I settled on. It's not better or worse. It just it was works for me. So before we even get started, so the benefits of having a template is basically you're ready to go as soon as you open up your program. You now, like for me, I have all my buses set up, my routing, all my groups, favorite instruments, sample libraries going. I have my sins for reverbs, delays. I my master chain somewhat yeah basically a template is great to use so when you have inspiration you want to get right into making something you have everything set up only thing you have to do is wait for the project to load and you're good it might seem kind of inconsequential at first you know because most things are going to load pretty fast anyway but it's sometimes it's that second or that minute or that anything is that extra step to get to the creative process that can really you know, stop your flow, stop your train of thought. I've lost ideas in just like, I felt like I came up with really good ideas and then I'm waiting for something to load or something crashes or whatever it is. And it's like, it's gone and I'm just, you know, sad. It happens all the time. But yeah, let's get into this. Since it's right here, let's look at the master. You can look over here, you can look over there. I usually have like a filter going on just to do like, kind of DJ style high passes, um, passive EQ, just to clean up the side signal, basically monoing everything below a certain frequency. It's set at 120, but I usually, it's usually at 68 or 120. That's a pretty good spot. Um, here's a compressor just in case. I used to mix into a compressor, nothing specific, just into one. I think it was the glue, uh, by Sontomic. And lately I've just, been uh, not doing that. It's not that it hindered or helped in any way. I think the sound I'm going for just doesn't, I just don't need that anymore. And sometimes I feel, I feel like really it was more of a habit I've like taken from like years back whenever I started doing it and just never stopped to figure out why or change, you know? A good thing to note is every now and then reevaluate why you do something. A reason you might had then might not be a reason that's still, you know, relevant now. So yeah, then I have ozone. Let's pop that open. Just the maximizer. And that's just because I mix fairly low. Like my mix downs with no plugins on the mask, they are normally around like negative 24 dB which is a pretty good spot, like negative 18, negative 24, can't really go wrong. It lifts up the volume so everything, I can hear, just basically hear it better without cranking my audio interface all the way up. So that's that. Then I have built-in spectrum meter, and then sonar works to calibrate either my headphones or my monitors, whatever I'm working on. And yeah, this is another plugin for headphones. Overall, if you've, I've usually go through my projects or templates, every other video, just uh, you know, reiterate why I do what I do. See now there's nothing on the drums. I got drum verb, uh, drum reverb bust that everything goes through. That should actually be this. I haven't put in there. It's my like new favorite plugin for drums, uh, reverb on drums. It's a little plate by, I'm looking at it right now, Sound Toys. It was like free last year and I think it might be like $99 now or a little less. It's totally worth it. It's a really cool sound. Um, side chain trigger. There'll be no sound from that. Uh, audio tracks for kick. Uh, Sly 6. Well, this is like a drum chopping plugin that comes from FL Studio. I had to bring it over because, you know, it's one of my favorite plugins. Although Studio One has its own like drum slicer now that's really capable and just, just as capable as this. But, you know, old habits. Um, percussion bus, 
any percussion bits I'll stick in there and I'll probably affect it or side chain it to the kick or the snare depending on what's going on. Bass, not much has changed. I have two compressors depending on which one I want to use. So if I want like a full ducking sound, I have a regular compressor. If I want to just duck out specific spaces, uh, you got Track Spacer by Waves Factory. It's really good. It's usually on sale for like 30 bucks at Plugin Boutique. Really nice. Then my go-to synth, which is basically Silent, Spire, and now Massive X, Massive 10, if it'll load. It's in there, although I haven't really used it a ton yet. I do like the plugin though. Um, synths, pads, same as usual. If I do a side chain, there's a compressor there. Got Silent, Spire, two contacts, cause I usually have pianos or strings, something in there. And these are all, these are all here cause they're like my go-to. I know I'm gonna use them, but I usually don't have any like presets or anything loaded except for down here with labs. It's in the pads for whatever reason, which doesn't have to be. Most of this stuff gets moved around at some point. But yeah, I have like a soft piano, which is uh, not, yeah. It's one of my like go-to pianos. It's free by the way. So if you don't use any of the Spitfire Lab stuff, definitely do that. It's a great, it's a, just a great resource. Yeah, everything else is pretty much the same. Pads feeds into the synths. All these group folders or whatever are also their own bus, just so I can, you know, have audio about it. FX, group, bus, same thing goes, few empty tracks. Vocals, few empty tracks. That's what's in there. My sins are in a group. They're not bus together. They're this in a folder for uh, organization purposes. So we got a Valhalla room. That's uh, probably like the default preset. Um, got an EQ, always pre-EQ or put an EQ before my like send effects just to get rid of uh, any unwanted frequencies or just sculpt the sound that's going into the reverb. And then I'll normally place one after the effect, reverb, delay, whatever, to clean up any unnecessary low frequencies that it might produce. Vintage verb, just in case. Also, these are all here as options depending on what sound I want to go to. Um, we got hybrid reverb by waves and then hybrid delay, which is one of my favorite delays. But yeah, then we got the master just down here for organization, visual purposes. But anyway, yeah, that is my new template. Basically a lot, a lot of plugins are added for me to just jump into. I use contact a lot more than I used to. Then I have some plugins in there that I know I want to use. And if I at least see them at first, then I'll think about, Hey, maybe use them cause they're here. If I end up not using them project, I'll end up, I'll delete them out of the project. No issue. Just like with these sins, like I have them nice and labeled or whatever, but if I want to add like a different delay, I'll just switch it out. But the point is I have a really nice starting point, you know, while I'm thinking of it, I could see some people asking like, because it's a template, why don't you have maybe like structure markers or thing like that? And I think that's really useful in the beginning, especially when you're learning how to structure things. So you might have, you know, 48 bars for an intro, I'd be odd, 64 bars for an intro, then 32 for like a mid intro, a breakdown into the drop, whatever, whatever have you. At this point, yeah, I just get structure. Like I don't have to put it down and it, you'll get to that point. The longer you do it, you'll just kind of feel things. But if you do struggle with that, it's really useful to just add markers, you know, add whatever helps. There's no point in making things hard just so you can say, yeah, I did it with this, without this or without that. It, it really doesn't matter. They're all just tools to help you make whatever you want to make in the end. So, yeah, that's about it. Uh, what does your template look like? Do you have one? Do you just start from blank every time? I mean, that could work, but I feel like a template is a good start. Mine is a bit more fleshed out because I know what I want, what I'm looking for, but yours might best be like four or five audio tracks and maybe your favorite plugin, who knows? So yeah, that's, uh, that's my time. Hope this helps. Maybe it's a little, inspirational for you to figure out your own thing. It's always cool to see other people work in my opinion.
yeah if you have any questions always leave them in the comments um drop me a message news from me put out an ep or a few tracks in the last week or two um sample pack it's also available of just sub bases there'll be a video on that just to run through them just so you guys can get an idea other than that uh yeah thanks for watching and see you in the next one